Welcome back to Bargaining and War. In this lecture, we're going to see how there always exist settlements that both parties prefer to war. To do this, we have to develop some notation to think about the structure of the sort of environment that we're looking at. So let's think about two states, we'll call them A and B, bargaining over some object in dispute. To get the notation all down, let's go ahead and start off by thinking about VA being some value greater than zero, which represents A's valuation of the prize. So this might be how much it values the territory that's in dispute between two actors, could represent how much it values a whole bunch of oil that they plan to extract out of a piece of territory, what have you. Likewise, we're gonna have VB, some amount greater than zero, represent B's value of the prize. So this is what they're playing for. The question is, will they play via war or will they play via peace? So let's think about what happens if they fight a war. We're gonna make this relatively simple. Lots of exercises that are in the back of chapter two are going to ask you to relax these sorts of assumptions and show that the general results hold under a broader set of circumstances. But for now, let's think about war in a very simple light, where if you fight, one party wins, one party loses, and that's the end of it. The party that wins will capture the entire prize, and the party that loses will capture nothing. So we're gonna let P, some value between zero and one, represent A's probability of winning a war. At various times throughout these lectures and throughout the book, I will describe P as the distribution of power, where A's probability of victory is A's share of the power. Now, because P is a probability, it is a value that is between zero and one. And so if you think about what one minus P represents, well, that's B's probability of winning. We're going to assume that there are no draws here. The reason that that's one minus P is that the two probabilities must sum to one if we're going to have no draws. And so if you add P plus one minus P altogether, you get one representing 100% of the possible outcomes. The drawback to settling via war is the fact that war is costly. To represent that, let's have a value CA greater than zero be A's cost of war. and CB greater than zero be B's cost of war. So these things are positive because if you think about how many people are going to be dying, how many buildings are going to be destroyed, that's some positive quantity. And we're in a moment going to then subtract out that positive quantity from a player's utility. You might think about having a negative cost However, that's gonna get a little bit complicated when we start thinking about a comparative static. If you just set that value of CA being negative, it's better to think about this as some positive value that is weighing how costly it is so that the larger CA is, the more costly war is. And then we subtract out that CA from A's war payoff. Okay, the last piece of notation is going to be a hypothetical division that we might want to impose between these two states. So we're gonna call that division X, where X represents A's share of the settlement. It's a hypothetical settlement. We don't know if we're gonna be able to institute one that's gonna work for both parties, but we'll see about that in a moment. We're gonna make X some value between zero and one, so that when we're thinking about this, X is representing the share in terms of a percentage that A is going to be receiving, with B getting the remainder. So then that means one minus X is capturing B's share of that hypothetical settlement. Okay, so now that we have all of the notation down on the board, let's think about the value for accepting a settlement versus the value for fighting a war. Let's start with A. So when does A prefer a settlement?
Okay, well, we have up here that A's share of a settlement is going to be X. That's a percentage share of the good. And so if it's receiving X in a settlement, we're going to be multiplying that by A's value of the prize, which is VA. So it's getting X percentage of the total value, the total value of which is VA. That's what happens if it settles. If it fights a war, then think about how we went through this the last time when we were up here thinking about these probabilities of victory. With probability P, A wins. And if it wins, it gets to capture 100% of the entire value VA. If it loses, then it's going to get none of that entire value of VA. And regardless, win or lose, we have the costs of war being CA, which we're going to subtract out. You'll notice here that we're not assuming any particular functional form about these costs for war. We might think in practice, for example, if A is more likely to win, maybe that it's not going to be paying the cost of war as much. That could be a relationship that you impose on the structure of this, but in fact, we can show a more general result if we don't assume that, and we just say that the cost of war is positive and leave it at that. Notice again that we're subtracting out that positive cost for war, which means that the way that A internalizes this is bad. It does not like having high costs. It likes having smaller costs. Okay, so what we have here then is when A is going to be happy to accept a settlement. A is going to be happy to accept a settlement as long as what it's getting from the settlement is at least as good as what it's getting for war. We can do a little bit of simplifying here. So let's just go ahead and get rid of all of that unnecessary one and multiplication, that zero entirely cancels out. So we have a little bit simpler of a statement right there of A being happy as long as X times VA is greater than or equal to P times VA minus CA. And if we're thinking about the actual settlement, the settlement itself is X. So if we're trying to figure out what settlements are going to work for both parties, we should be finishing this inequality in terms of X. So we need to divide everything by VA. And if we do that, we get X has to be greater than P minus CA divided by VA. Okay, good. Well, we can do the same thing for the other player, state B. So when does B prefer a settlement? If we go back up here, we see that B's share of a settlement is 1 minus x, and it is thinking of the value of the prize as VB. So it's going to get 1 minus x percentage of VB if it were to accept a deal. So that means that we have this being B's total payoff for accepting a deal. Now let's think about what B's payoff is for fighting a war. Well, with probability P, we have A winning, and if A is winning, that means A is taking the entire prize and B is getting nothing. So that means that we have as the first part of this payoff for war, P times zero, because A is winning and B is getting none of that value VB in that case. And then with probability one minus P, we have B now emerging victorious, which means it will capture 100% of the prize, which it values at VB. And regardless, it has to pay a cost for war. So CB is going to be subtracted out at the very end. So you'll notice that B is happy as long as what it's receiving from the settlement is at least as large as what it's getting from the right side of the inequality. Well, like before, we can do some simplifying here. Let's just go ahead and multiply everything out on the right-hand side. So that zero cancels everything there. We have a one and a one minus P times a VB, and we subtract out a CB. Excellent. What more do we have here? Well, we can multiply out the VB on both of these. So VB minus PVB minus CB. And then you can see that these VBs cancel. So we can move the X over here. We want to solve for X, and I'll get rid of the negative if we do that. 
PVB plus CB. So we're just flip-flopping everything on the other sides so that everything is becoming positive. And now to solve for x, we just should divide off VB from both sides. So we get x less than or equal to P plus CB over VB. So we have two constraints for getting a settlement to work. We have from here, B requiring that x is sufficiently small, P plus CB divided by VB. And for the other one coming from up here, we have x has to be greater than or equal to P minus CA over VA. So if we think about what's going on with both of these conditions. The one on the left is coming from B. This is what B needs to be satisfied. Think about what X represents. X represents A's share of the good. So for B to be satisfied, A can't get too much because if A is getting too much, then B is not getting enough and B prefers fighting a war. And what defines too much in this case is P plus CB divided by VB. Meanwhile, the second of our inequalities is reflecting what A needs. X again represents A's share of the good, and so A needs a sufficiently large share of the good to be satisfied, and that's why X has to be greater than or equal to P minus CA over VA. One more time, we just need both of these things to be satisfied for us to get a deal done. So let's figure out if we can find a value of X such that X is simultaneously less than or equal to P plus CB over VB, and that X value is greater than P minus CA over VA. If this inequality holds, then we can get a deal that is satisfactory to both parties. Well, to answer if such X values exist, really all we should be doing is erasing that middleman of X and asking ourselves whether P plus CB over VB is a larger value than P minus CA over VA. If that's the case, then there are values that are going to fall in between those two that we can select for X that will be mutually satisfactory. Well, you'll notice here that the P's cancel off, and if we add the cost to the other side, we get CA over VA plus CB over VB is greater than or equal to zero. If that statement is true, then we can find values of X that are mutually satisfactory. We can appease both parties and avoid war. Well, does that inequality hold? As it turns out, the answer is yes. If we go way back up here, what do we see? CA is a positive value, CB is a positive value, and if we go further back up, VA is a positive value and VB is a positive value. So, if you take two positive values, everything here is positive, you take two positive values and have some sort of multiplication or division between them, you're left with a positive value. So this thing is positive. And uh, if you do the same thing with this, same story, this is positive. So we're adding two positive numbers together, which of course are greater than or equal to zero. In fact, they're strictly greater than zero. So this is true. What we have just shown is that there are always exist settlements that are mutually preferable to war, just like that. Pretty easy. But the implications are actually fairly deep, and that's what we're going to be exploring through this entire course. What does this result mean, and why is it that we still have states fighting some of the time anyway? We're going to go deeper into this proof, so if there's some sort of conceptual issue with what's going on, why this works, hopefully by the next few lectures you'll have a better idea of what's going on. Hope you enjoyed this, and hope to see you next time. Take care.